What's up guys? Today I'm going to be showing you how you can design a footer that you can use in any of your website projects. Mark you, today we're going to be designing a responsive footer. So a footer is a section at the bottom of a web page that typically contains important information and links. So we have things like contact information, social media icons, we have navigation links, legal information, that's privacy policy, terms of service, subscription forms and the like. And a well-designed footer is clear. It should be organized and consistent with the site's overall design. And it needs to ensure that the users can easily find the information they need on the website that you are designing for your clients. Now, in front of us, we have a basic wireframe. Unlike the previous tutorials where we created our wireframes with a paper and a pen, this time around went with elements just within Figma. So if you haven't watched the previous tutorial where I was showing you how to design headers, so these are the different headers we went ahead to design, then please, you need to refer to those tutorials and learn a thing or two from there. So today we are going to be designing our responsive footer. What we are going to be doing first is to be bringing in the elements we need to create our footer. But before we do that, I need to explain exactly how this wireframe is going to function. So the first thing is the wireframe is divided into four sections. We have a first section that contains a logo, some information about the company and social media links. Section two contains a heading and some links. Section three contains a heading and also some links. And the last section contains a subscription for where people can subscribe to a newsletter. Then at the bottom, we have the copyright. So the first thing we're going to do is to bring in the logo and we're going to bring in the links. So in order for us to bring in the logo, I'm going to make use of the component library because we have added logos to the component library. In order to do that, we need to come to where we have assets, the asset tab, click within it, and we are going to type in logo. And we will be using this because this is going to be a dark background. So I'll just drag this and drop it inside this wireframe. This is where we're going to be designing our footer. The next thing we're going to need is the social media links. So I'm just going to go to our design system. From the previous tutorials, we have already created design systems that contain some of the elements we are going to be using. We have buttons, we have icons, we have the input forms. So if you haven't watched the tutorials or if you need access to these files, I'm going to attach a link in the description box so that you'll be able to download it and follow me as I work. So what we need here is our social media icons, which is going to be these four. So I'll just tap on Ctrl C to copy. I'm going to go back to the UI kit page and I'll just paste it within the box. Okay. So the next thing I'm going to need is this input. And we're also going to need the button. So I'm going to go back to our component library, navigate to assets, and I'm going to type in input because I remember the name with which I had saved the input. This is what we need. I'll just drag and drop it inside. And the last thing I'm going to need is the button. So I'll just type in button. And this is what I need. So the reason why it's text is because I have created a variation of this. So this is just one variant. If I want to use the variant with a fill, I'll just need to come to where we have the component settings. So I think all the elements we need are in place. I'm just going to close this and I'm going to go back to the layers panel. So we're going to start with this very first section. The first section is the logo. But before we do that, we need to turn on our layout grid so that we can see how we are laying out our various elements. So make sure that your frame is selected. I've also created a tutorial on how to create layout grid. So I'm going to attach a link for that too. So make sure that your frame is selected. Come to where you have layout grid and we're going to make it visible. I'm just going to click on the eye icon. So this is our 12 column layout grid. Now I want our logo to be... It should be aligned to the very first column. Now we can't see it because the logo has white and gold. So what I'm going to do now is just to make the background dark. I'm going to select this frame, come to where we have fill, click on the style icon, and we are going to select one of these colors. And I'm going to select the C3, which is the dark color. Now the next thing we're going to do is to add some text here. And we are going to be making use of a plugin to do that. I'm going to select my text tool and I'm going to draw a text box inside, making sure that it covers the first three columns. I'll just type something inside. 
Then we are going to go now to the resources icon. We're going to click on it and we're going to look for a Lorem Ipsum plugin, which is this. And I'm going to wait for it to load. So now that it's loaded, I just want it to fill in some text here that is going to cover the body of text. So I'm just going to put in three sentences and let's see how it looks. Make sure that your text box is selected. I'm just going to click on generate. Okay, I think he has generated enough text for me. Now that we have our text in place, what we need to do is to apply one of the text styles that we had previously created. So I'm just going to make sure that this is selected. Come to where we have our text styles. Click on the styles icon and we are going to select the paragraph style, which is this. And I think that our text is good to go. I'm just going to select both and shift it up. Now we're going to need these icons that we had brought in. I'm going to zoom in so you see what I'm doing. We'll first change the colors of the icons and we are going to make it white. I'll bring it here and I'm going to hit shift A to give it an auto layout so that we can automatically add spacing in between each of the icons. So in this case, I want our spacing to be 24. So I think for now our icons are good. We don't have anything to change here. Now we're going to move to the next section. Let me just verify to make sure that everything fits within the three columns. I'll just adjust it a little bit. Okay. So let's go now to the next section. So the next section is supposed to call thing, a heading and some links. So in this case, our heading is going to be company. I'm going to go again to our text tool. I'm going to click once and we are going to type in company. So company. And we are going to give this a heading style. Make sure that the text is selected. We're going to give this a heading style of six. Let's see how it looks. I think it looks fine to me. We just bring it down a little bit. And we are going to duplicate this because we are going to be creating links. Now, the first link is going to be called About Us. Before duplicating the About Us link, I'm just going to apply the paragraph style again. Then now we can duplicate this Alt-Shift to bring it down. The next one is going to be Blog. And the third is going to be Career. Careers and the fourth is going to be our team. Okay, so I think that our company is good to go. Now, in the last one, let me just bring this in because it's supposed to occupy the next three columns. You take note that I'm making sure that the text doesn't overlap and go into the gutters. So I'm good with this. I'll just duplicate this because we are still going to be creating links. So I'll just duplicate this. Let's refer to our previous design. This is the design. So our next is going to be legal. So the legal is going to contain legal information just the way it says. So let's say legal information. And under this, we are going to have privacy policy. Term of use and term of service or term of terms and conditions. Terms and conditions. Okay, so I'm just going to delete the last one because we don't need it. Now, in this last, we need a button. It looks like a button has gotten missing somewhere inside here. Okay, I found it. So this is the button. I'm just going to make sure that it's selected and come to where we have our component settings. I'm going to click on primary so that it brings out the button. Let me look at what secondary does. Okay, I think we're going to stick to secondary. We want the background to be gold. So we're going to bring this down. 
and let's refer again to our design so we have a heading somewhere here so i'm just going to duplicate this heading so that we will make use of it for our last section and we're going to call this subscribe now with an exclamation mark then our input or placeholder is just going to contain email and our button is going to have its own label i'm just going to stretch it out so that it has the same width as the input form and we are going to call this subscribe okay so we have all our components in place now the last thing we need to do is to add a copyright so i'll just copy the text but i'm going to come down and just duplicate this and just paste the text inside our text box okay so now we need to make sure that everything is arranged the way it's supposed to be and what we are going to do is to make use of auto layout if you've been watching my previous tutorial you know that i love making use of auto layout and auto layout is what we are going to use to make our design responsive so we're going to start with the very first section now this already has auto layout so i'm going to select the social media icons and the body of text hit shift a and we are going to give this a spacing of 24 so 24 is fine then we are going to select the logo hit shift a and we are just going to give it a spacing of about 48 so this is fine for now now we're going to go to the next section make sure that everything is aligned properly okay it is select the four links hit shift a and we are instead going to give this a spacing of 16 then we are going to select the heading hit shift a and we are going to give it a spacing of 48 so i'm just going to bring this up a little bit so that it has some sort of an alignment yes so this is good we're going to do exactly the same thing here so i'll select this shift a give it spacing of 16 select the heading shift a give it a spacing of 48 and we'll just align it and we're going to go to the last section select the input the button hit shift a and the spacing is going to be 16 then we're also going to select with the heading hit shift a and the spacing is going to be 48 great okay so we have everything aligned properly now we are going to select all our sections hit shift a yes and we are good to go so shift a i will make sure that our spacing in between is going to be 20. so now that we have our element aligned properly spacing applied properly next thing we are going to do is to apply our padding and we are also going to have to include a copyright here with this already having auto layout we are going to give it a horizontal padding of 120 i'm just going to align it and we are going to give this a vertical padding of 80. okay i'm going to bring this up now that we have a vertical padding of 80 I want us to add this line so i make sure that this is what we just applied our auto layout to and our spacing make sure that it's selected come to where we have a stroke and we're going to click on the plus button to add a stroke but in this case we want to add a bottom stroke to our selection so with this still selected click on the stroke per side and we're going to select the bottom stroke one now we need to change the color so that we have this Kind of a faint-ish white or a grayish color now with this still selected make sure you're under the stroke we're going to click on the styles icon we're going to navigate to where we have white and we're going to use 20 percent and let's see how it looks so 20 percent looks fine it looks fine to me so we are going to stick to that what we're also going to do is to apply a wrap value to these sections so currently this is the auto layout 
and auto layout we have the horizontal layout that has been applied to our sections and generally with responsive designs you need to make sure that as the different screen sizes are reducing that is how the various elements need to adapt to the screen sizes so in order for us to achieve that responsive view here we need to make sure that we apply better wrap value so making sure that this frame is selected i'm going to click on wrap so we are going to see the difference when we start testing out our responsive footer. Now, the next thing we need to do is to apply a spacing in between the copyright text and this section. So I'm just going to hold the shift key on my keyboard and click on copyright to select both. Then hit shift A to give it an auto layout. So the spacing here is going to be 48. And we also have to apply a button padding. So there's going to be some sort of a spacing just below the copyright. I'm going to zoom in so you see what I'm doing. So making sure that this frame is still selected, we're going to come to where we have padding. But what we're going to do is to go for the individual padding. So I'm going to click on this so it separates the value. So now we want to apply the bottom padding. So if you want to apply individual paddings, you can apply for bottom, top, left and right in this case we want just the bottom so i'm going to click on apply variable and we are going to be selecting 80. great so we had created this particular frame the footer frame just because i wanted us to see the different elements that we're adding and to make sure that we made use of our layout grid but now we don't really need it so i'm just going to bring out the footer element so that it creates its own frame Make sure that this is selected. I'm just going to click out and select this again so that the entire frame is not going to be selected. I'm going to drag it out. And this is a new footer. So what we are going to do is we're going to add a background so it has the same shape like the previous frame. Making sure this is selected, I'm going to come to where we have fill. And we're going to select C3. So we're going to name this footer. And since we don't need the first frame anymore i'm just going to delete it and we are going to drag this footer up okay so before we test out to see if this footer is responsive we are going to add this to our component library remember the advantages of having this is because we are creating multiple screens and you want to make a change on one of the items on the footer all you need to do is to refer to the original component and it's going to apply to all the other screens so we are going to make sure that this is selected and we're just going to click on the components icon once so our component footer has been created and now we need to test out to see if our footer is responsive so i'm just going to come to the right edge and we are going to drag this in so you notice how responsive our elements are so generally this is how a responsive footer is supposed to work and auto layout plays a great role in making sure that this works the way it's supposed to so i just want the width to be 1440 just like it was before i'll just enter 1440 okay so guys thank you so much for watching this is exactly how you create a responsive footer and you can use it on any project that you are laying your hands on now i hope that you have learned something new in this art tutorial and hopefully in the next tutorial there is still going to be a lot more that you are going to learn so if you haven't subscribed now is the time for you to subscribe until next time bye bye